Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Happy full moon. Oh, I don't know about you, but man, I have not felt this physically affected by <clears throat> astrological alignments, energetic, you know, frequency, whatever's happening. Maybe we could just call it like the sort of the energetic weather right now because all of those things are contributing to it, right? Um, I have not felt this directly affected in a long, long time. And I know I'm not alone. I'm hearing this from so many people, so many of uh, my colleagues, so many clients, so many friends are all saying the same thing. Like right now, it is so intense energetically. And there's a lot happening astrologically. You know, I'm not an astrologer, as I've said many times before. I am a tourist when it comes to, well, I'm more than a tourist. I'm getting a little deeper into it. You know, I have the full moon square Uranus right now, which is, I think, a lot of what we're happening. I think there's also like a grand cross of some sort coming in. And if any of you are astrologers or more adept than I am, please feel free to share in the comments what you know about what's happening astrologically. I also know that right now, you know, we're in the midst of some things that haven't happened, you know, in over 2,500 years. So we're talking like pre-Christian history here and just using, you know, Christianity as the marker of, you know, the that pivot point in history. Anyway, I digress. It's deep. It's intense. It is next level. It is no joke and it needs to be. And I get it. And let me know, like, give me a heart, give me a thumbs up, give me the unicorn sliding down the rainbow or whatever. Um, if you are feeling this too, if you're feeling so directly physically affected by what's happening right now, energetically speaking, I'm still in my gardening outfit. So looking a little scrubby this morning. Um, you know, and what I want to share, I know you, I know you're with me, Celine. I know it. I see, I see so many of you as I'm scrolling through Instagram and I'm getting the same vibe from y'all. So I know you're with me. Um, yeah, I know Phoenix. It's insane. Thank you, Celine. Thank you. New podcast, by the way, the Luminous.podcast. You can follow me here on Instagram. And then I'm also on Spreaker, which is The Luminous. It's just called The Luminous on Spreaker. I'm on all the streaming platforms right now. Um, but right now, things are intense. Yes, let's just blanket statement, acknowledgement that it is super intense. It's happening physically for most of us. And when I say physical, I'm not just talking about the body. It's part of the material self. So we're talking about emotional baggage. We're talking about unhealed trauma. We're talking about old programs that are inorganic, like these mind viruses that we're all infected with. We're talking about whatever col colonial programs and the programs of colonization still live within you. And we all have them. If you are a human, and I don't care where you live, I don't care where your race is, I don't care what your, unless you are part of a tribe or a group of individuals who is living somewhere in the middle of nowhere with no internet, in which case you're probably not catching this live stream, we all are carrying these programs of indoctrination, of coloni colonization, and of domestication within us. And so a lot of what is happening right now may not make sense because it could be an old belief system that ha now has a physical component within your body. And so it is the body that is clearing out where these beliefs are held. So you may be trying to make sense of like, what the hell's going on? I don't understand. It's because it is all being cleared away. And the lunar cycle that we are in right now with this full moon is a whopper. And the message that I have for you today, this full moon message that again, you know, I, I've stepped away from doing regular stuff on YouTube, regular stuff here. It will continue to be just whenever I'm guided and inspired to share, I will. Um, so if you like a scheduled, regular, you know, regularly scheduled program, I hate to disappoint you because I'm not that guy, except for the podcast. Anyway, my point here is the message I have for you today, and I'm going to share a little bit of my own experience with you just to illustrate as I uh, often do. Hey, Mary, smallness is not safety. And I understand, believe me, I understand probably more than you would ever realize do I understand the lure and the seduction of the old small ways the lure and the seduction of the belief that we've been sold, that those people up there in those offices who say that they are, you know, with us and for us, they are not, they have never been. And if there is a politician that is currently in office out there that is actually working towards the reunion of self and humanity, 
they're a unicorn and hey unicorns are real in that sense and we need as many unicorns as we can get but as a blanket statement the ideas that we have been sold in terms of what it is that makes you successful, what it is that keeps you safe, what it is that a good, productive human would be, and whatever title you wear. So whatever you've been told, if you identify as a liberal, if you identify as a conservative, if you identify as a progressive, if you identify as a moderate, if you don't identify politically at all, whatever you have been told, right? If you're a liberal, then you think these things, do these things, vote for these people, believe these things. Is that true? Is that true? Only you can decide. Same thing with a conservative. Well, if I'm conservative and I think these things, I vote these things, I wear these things, I believe these things, I hang out with... All of that is coming up for review. And any identity that we make, any statement that comes after I am, because the only claim that the divine ever makes is I am. And so from our human perspective, anything that comes after the word I am or the phrase I am is a choice, and it is a limitation. Now, let's be honest. Some limitations are necessary, right? The human body is a limitation because as an energetic, infinite being, I am currently within an experience that is finite. I am currently within an experience that is much denser on the energetic scale because matter is denser than light. And, you know, we can talk about this from a scientific perspective that light can be a wave, right? A wave is the light that we see, the frequency, the bandwidth, or it can be a particle. So as light slows down enough, it becomes something that has the appearance of being solid, being stable, and being an actual thing. This is just light that's moving really, really slowly relative to the other frequencies of light. So from a fundamental perspective, anything that we say, I am this, I am this, Anything that comes after the words I am is a limitation. So the point here is whatever limitations you are making claim to, girl, you better make sure they are 100% something that you are willing to be invested in for the long haul. And if it is not something that aligns with the truth of your being, if it is not something that aligns with the truth of your soul, you are going to feel it and you are going to begin to see it because the notions of smallness it's a lie. Small does not mean safe. So I know. I know because I know. That most of us, I would say probably 99% of the humans kicking around in a body right now, have this sense of like, there's something else I need to do. There's something else I'm supposed to do. There's something else I want to do. So there's this sense of a bigger picture, a bigger life, a bigger experience, a bigger calling. Hey, Mark, thank you. So there you are being called towards something greater than your history. We are all collectively, humanity is being called towards something greater than our history. And only you can decide that you're ready to do it. Only you can decide that you're going to do it. Even if you don't know that you're ready or think that you're ready, only you can decide that you're going to proceed. And it may require you to step away from everything that is familiar and comfortable. And that's just what you got to do. Because you get to decide what is more important to you, the cage or the open plane. Think of it this way. A lion born in captivity, has everything it needs. It has food, it has shelter, it has a vet that comes and visits it when it's sick, it has people to feed it and take care of it, but is it free? And a lion who's born in captivity doesn't know anything else. So if we are a being who was born into a system that from day one begins to colonize us and indoctrinate us and domesticate us, the idea of life outside the cage is terrifying because you have been programmed to believe that you need the system and you need the matrix and without it, you're going to suffer and struggle and be homeless and destitute and dead. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's a fucking lie. And the architects of the matrix know this and they're really, really good at convincing you that you need the matrix. But here is how you can begin to gauge. Where are you still holding yourself back because you think you need the zookeeper to come feed you and tend to you 
and take care of you every single day. And that without your zookeeper, your pris in prisoner, your colonizer, your domesticator, that without them, you would be lost. So wherever it is that you are still arguing for your captor, Stockholm Syndrome, y'all, we are arguing to be domesticated. We are arguing to be limited. We are requesting and requiring and screaming at those people who are saying, no, actually, I don't want to live that way. Because we cannot conceive of a life outside of the cage. I'm here to tell you, the cage door is open right now. But it won't be forever. We are approaching a very real split in timelines. And I've been talking about this for a while. And this is something that I talked about at the beginning of the year specifically. There's receipts on my YouTube channel. Go to YouTube Amar Energy. I've been talking about this shit for years. And I'm not the only one. There's people who've been talking about this shit for decades. And here we are. And yes, it's taking a little longer than we anticipated. Yes, things are taking a little longer to shift than perhaps some of us would like. But this also is a collective shift. And a whole lot of people are still really fucking hypnotized by the lies and the illusion. But smallness is not safe. Because smallness requires you to stay in a place of control. Smallness requires you to stay in a place where ultimately it's not up to you. And if you think for one second that your rights are enshrined and can never be taken away from you, baby, welcome to Roe versus Wade being overturned. So the story, these pretty, pretty stories that are coming out of so many of these mouths right now, we're seeing that they're lies. Here's the other thing, and I'm not going to digress down this rabbit hole, but the whole Roe Ro versus Wade thing is a perfect opportunity for us to still see where we believe we need the permission of the monolith to exercise our sovereign right over our bodies. You have never needed the permission of the monolith, of the matrix, to do what you need to do with your vessel. That is yours. It belongs to you. It is your sovereign body and your sovereign authority. And the matrix is never going to give you permission, baby. The matrix is only going to allow you to continue down the very, very narrow predetermined path. So, if you think that we're just waiting for the dust to settle and then everything's going to go back to normal, honey, get comfy. I hope you brought snacks and a lot of books. I would love to know in the history of humanity when any government or monolith of control has ever taken rights away and then given them back. I'll wait. Show me the receipts, babe. Because I don't know. And I, granted, I was a horrible student. I hated history. Because, you know, history is written by the people who have the most control. So even history didn't really happen that way, right? I digress. We could go down a whole lot of rabbit holes here. My point being, if you're thinking that, oh, well, we're just waiting for things to settle down and then it will go back to normal. My God, sweetheart, I love you. But the levels of delusion that it takes to continue to believe that are unprecedented. So. You have. The Berlin Wall wasn't given, friend. The Berlin Wall was taken, right? They didn't say, oh, go ahead and knock it down. You have our permission. No, people said, fuck you. It's coming down. Anyway, my point here today is that smallness is not safety. And I'll give you, a, and I understand the lure of it and the mind and the programs that think they're keeping you safe by keeping you in the cage. But you have three meals a day. You have the zookeeper that comes and lets you out and walk around your pen. You have a, you know, a concrete pool with some chlorinated water in it that you can swim in. You have a veterinarian that comes every day or every month or whatever to make sure you're okay. But are you free? Are you living as an organic, natural expression of all that you are? Only you can answer that question. So I've been sharing with you over the past couple of years how I've had this vision since I started this practice of a large property 
with a lot of acreage and a return to a natural way of living. And when I mean natural, like I am not disconnected from the earth in this vision. It is that I feed the earth and she feeds me in return. And I don't need the grocery store. And I have the dairy farm down the road and we swap produce for dairy. And then the egg farmer up the street and we swap, you know, produce for eggs and the whatever, right? So it is this idea that we are collectively taking care of one another. We do not need a government institution or a monolith to give us permission to take care of each other, to take care of ourselves. Why do you think there are so many places in the country right now where it is illegal to put a garden in your front lawn, right? All these little measures of control, separately, they don't seem to be much, but when you add them all together, it's very clear that if you believe the matrix is taking care of you, you are in for a rude awakening. So I've had this vision for a long time, and as I shared in my most recent podcast episode about are you the source of what you seek, that I have begun to create for myself the life that I see. No, I don't have 40 acres in a property right now. No, I am not growing food on a scale that could feed me and a hundred other people for a year. But I'm moving towards it. I'm moving towards it. I just pulled 50 onions out of the ground the other day. I've got a ton of other plants that are getting ready to harvest. I have seedlings in my basement right now sprouting for my winter garden. I'm doing everything I can to begin to bring this reality into my life starting now. Because if you want it, you've got to find a way to claim it now. That is the trick to manifestation. It's not just putting it on your vision board and then sitting back and waiting. It's saying, no, okay, if I'm an artist, what does an artist do? If I want to be an artist, I have to imagine, what does an artist do? Well, the first thing an artist does is they create. So if I'm sitting here going, God, I really wish I could be an artist, but I'm not drawing. Bitch, get yourself a pen and paper. I got a whole bunch of them right here. If you don't have them, I'll mail you one. Get some pen and paper and start drawing. Now you're an artist. That is the first step towards becoming a self-sustaining artist. That's my point here. So I have over the past couple of years, yes, Tanya, it is small and steady. It's like jumping into a hot bath. You don't just dive in because then it's a shock to the system and you jump back out. No, you ease into it. You slowly make incremental changes so that then by the time you are immersed in this new reality, this tub of beautiful hot water, oh, I'm okay. I can handle this. So, hey, Rebecca, so lovely to see you here. I talked to your dad the other day for a moment. Anyway, you've got to start finding ways to make it a reality now. And the minute that you do, bam, 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 stuff just starts showing up and popping. I've had this dream for a long time. And the other day I had this moment of rage, like it was just erupting within me. And I was like, why am I still here in Colorado? Don't get me wrong. I'm grateful for my family having extended this place to me for so long and giving me all the space that I have and giving me basically free reign to farm and garden however I want back here on this acre. But I've also been here for three years and I know that this is not the end of the line and I can't wait to get on with it. But I felt myself conflicted, like part of me wants this dream and knows that this dream is coming. I can feel it in my bones. It's like baked into my DNA. This is what I came for, part of what I came for. And the other part of me is afraid of that. And there's this conflict between what I want and what I have. And why am I so, why does it seem like I'm farther and farther away from the dream? Well, I had this realization the other day through the help of a loving friend. And he helped me to really uncover the truth that part of this program only wants things to be virtual. It doesn't want it to be real, right? It only wants the safety of this digital buffer, right? I see all my clients online. I look at properties online. I date online. I watch TV online. I, you know, it's like my, my experience was becoming less and less real and more and more virtual, which is why I was always finding myself wanting to go outside and just get my hands in the dirt, something real and smell the air and feel the sun and see the birds and the bees and the flowers and all of that. So I had this realization that, oh, This program just doesn't want it to be real. It's only comfortable when it's in the abstract idea of like, well, someday it's going to happen. And I thought, fuck that. Someday is now. I'm ready to go now. So smallness was the idea that this program had that if I just stay small and if it's just an idea and it's never an actuality, then I'm safe. That is such a lie. And that is so depressing. And I did not come here for a virtual life. So, 
I realized that the only thing that was going to shift things was me deciding it was time to proceed. And we're also now in Leo season, so we are in that more externally um, motivated, external, what's the word I'm looking for? Momentum, external action, right? Cancerian season was very much an internal thing. It was all about getting in here and sitting with those inner selves. Leo is a total opposite of that. It is the external expression. I mean, to me, Cancer and Leo, it's like the difference between the sun and the moon. So we're in Leo season. We're in that forward momentum. It's time to go. It's time to do it. It's time to build an energy. We also have Uranus in the mix right now, which Uranus is the future, man. Uranus is the future coming and pinging you and saying, hey, I'm here to electrify you. I'm here to wake you up. I'm here to like sizzle you, right? Like it's like, oh, it's so hot. I'm like sizzling. There's so much energy moving through me. That's Uranus. So. What I had to do was finally start saying yes to the little breadcrumbs that are before me now about getting this dream to become a reality. And in the past 24 hours, things have really started to shift in that momentum in a very real way where I can now begin to see the path forward. But it's not guaranteed in the way that the mind thinks it is. It's not full of answers and details in the ways of like, okay, on August 15th, you're going to do this. And then in September, you're going to do this. And then June, you know, it's not laid out like that. This is the other thing. Where we are moving is unprecedented. We do not have a historical record for where humanity is right now. And I personally think that that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Because the problem with history and the problem with the insistence that if you don't forget your history, you're bound to repeat it. Bullshit! If you don't reconcile your history and let it go, you're bound to repeat it. If you do not remember that the intellect can only perceive something historically, and the intellect is many, many things, but to live at the exclusion of the intellect is just as foolish as to live at the exclusion of the feeling intuitive center. So we need our intellect, which is our masculine. We need our intuitive feeling, which is our feminine. And we need them both to move forward into a way of being that has never been experienced on this planet before. So your answers are not in history, unless you're looking for what not to do. <laughs> Historical data is good for things like, oh, this person just grew an acre of tomatoes and they documented all of their process. So I have all of this information to refer to. That's what history is good for. History is good for giving you ways and methods to approach something, but it is not good for telling you how things are or should be or are going to be. Looking to the intellect to tell you what's coming is like asking your five-year-old child to balance your household budget. It is just not within their realm of understanding. It has no concept of that because the future is always feminine first. And no, that's not like a hashtag thing. It's how it, things are. Everything is always feminine first. It is the feminine desire for a specific frequency of experience that gives the masculine its blueprint. Because without, yes, Stephen, the human mind interferes too much and the mind should be the last part of you that is activated. The mind is not necessary at all until you have a fully fleshed out sense of what do I wanna feel? What do I want the fabric of my experience to be? What do I want the energetic experience to be? What do I want the flavor and the vibe and the flow to feel like? And that is what the feminine offers. And then she gives that to the masculine and says, here you go, go build it. So without the feminine first, the masculine has nowhere to go. The masculine without the feminine is just a bull in the china shop waving his dick around trying to impress people and he doesn't know why. And so he gets angry and violent and aggressive because he's cut off from his feminine intuitive feeling center. Smallness does not keep you safe. If the dream that you have is just a regurgitation or a reinvention, a reinvention of what you've already done or what someone else has already done, push harder, dig deeper, think bigger. Now is not the time to play it small. Spirit has never asked you to settle. Spirit has never asked you to play small. She didn't give you her own powers of creation for no reason. She gave those abilities to you because she knows within you is the truth that will inform you to wield them responsibly and benevolently. 
But total freedom requires total responsibility. You have to be willing to get in there and look at your own shit and see what it is that's holding you back. And guess what? It's not the patriarchy that's holding you back. It is not the feminists that are holding you back. It is not the liberals or the conservatives or the government or the FDA or the CDC or the whatever. None of that is what is holding you back. It is your belief about it and your investment in it and your desire to stay small that holds you back. Systems built on truth liberate absolutely. So if a system is asking you to deny what you know to be true and cut off parts of yourself that, so that you can fit into the system, it is not based on truth. So the notions of smallness Guaranteeing only one thing, that your life will continue to stay this big. And the division of realities that is currently underway, this is why shit is so weird right now. This is why it feels so surreal and and otherworldly, because we are literally swimming in energies that very rarely, rarely align and come into this planet. And that for a long time weren't able to come into this planet because of the density. So it's weird right now. It's otherworldly right now. It is surreal right now because the cage is falling. And again, if you were born and bred and raised in a cage, the idea of life outside the cage seems terrifying. But as someone who has been allegiant and unyielding in my desire for total freedom, I can tell you that on the other side, it's real. Freedom is real. Liberation is real. And it doesn't look anything like I thought it would. And it has been backbreaking and gut-wrenching inner work at times. I was talking with a friend about this the other day and he was like, my God. He said, if I knew that when I started this journey of healing 10 years ago that it was going to take me a decade to get to this point, I might have given it a second thought. And I thought, yeah. And then later on I thought, yeah, but you know what? 10 years is going to pass anyway. So in 10 years, do you want to look back and go, fuck, I just kicked the can down the road for my own healing work just another 10 years and here I am right back where I was 10 years ago had I started then had I listened to any one of the sources the myriad of sources that have been talking about this stuff forever so 10 years are going to pass regardless the calendar is going to flip over tomorrow to Friday or Saturday if you're on the other side of the dateline regardless Time ain't waiting for you, babe. The illusion of linear time is not going to wait for you. Spirit is not going to wait for you. The universe is not going to wait for you to get over yourself and your notions of smallness. And I get it. It is hard. It is scary. And shredding your, shredding your victim card is a huge step. It takes a lot to make the claim that I had a hand in creating all of it. I am the creator of everything that I have ever perceived or experienced in this life Period. It is unequivocal. And that's how I live my life. And that requires a level of honesty that for some people is brutal. But the decades are going to click by regardless. And there's a very real division coming towards the end of the year. Once we get into October-ish, look out. Because those of us that are forging the path, it is not an exclusive path. Babe, I'm leaving breadcrumbs every step of the way. And if should you find yourself suddenly on the outside of the cage and you need somewhere to go, look me up. But I ain't waiting. Choices have been made and choices have an outcome. And not making a choice is a choice. And choosing to believe that anybody that does not believe in this small story of control and dominion over your body... If you don't believe that that is terrifying, then good on you. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. But that is not for me. So just because you believe that everyone who's pushing in the other direction is wrong doesn't mean that they are. Just because you believe that everyone who holds information or has a perspective that is counter to yours doesn't mean that they're wrong. Doesn't mean that you're wrong either. It just means that somewhere along the line, this sense of who to trust 
being oriented outside of us almost exclusively, that is corruption. That is colonization. That is the settler, the explorer showing up on the shores and saying, oh, no, no, your traditions that are thousands of years old, those are wrong. Oh, no, no, your sense of truth and trust in who you really are and what you're capable, that's all wrong. Oh, no, 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 your sense of connection and love and stewardship of the planet that you call home, oh, no, 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 that's all wrong. That's colonization. And the colonials don't want you free. <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's anathema to their whole agenda. They want you sick, they want you afraid, they want you divided, and they want you distracted, and they want you dependent. So I could say diseased, divided, distracted, dependent, and afraid. I need a D word that starts with afraid, <laughs> an afraid word that starts with D. Someone get in the thesaurus. That's what they want from you. And that's easy. It's so easy to just go click, there's my food, click, there's my sex, Click, there's my entertainment. Click, there's my distraction. Meanwhile, the world is burning. Oh, but please don't take my comfort from me. Please don't take my smallness from me. Smallness is not safe. Dread, I love that, Jenny. Thank you. So they want you filled with dread. They want you filled with disease. They want you divided. They want you distracted. They want you dead. So we have a choice. And the choice is now because people are not, yes, exactly. The proper definition of conquer. They want you conquered. They want you submissive. They want you subservient. They want you controllable. They want you so dependent on their way of being that they have shown you is the only choice and the only option that you are terrified to walk out of that cage. But the cage door is open and it has been, but it will not be forever because spirit in her benevolent wisdom and grace and compassion has said, you live in a free will reality, my dear, and you get to choose. And choices have outcomes and those outcomes are beginning to take root and gain traction. And so whatever it is that you continue to show up in service of, whatever it is that you continue to bow at the altar and the feet of, are you bowing at the feet of being controlled? Are you bowing at the feet of being dominated? Are you bowing at the feet of your own liberation, your own responsibility and accountability? Are you bowing at the feet of your own master creative ability? Because the last quarter of this calendar year, is going to be mind-blowing. And the choices that we are making now are setting the stage and building the geometry that we will live in. And geometry can be a portal to liberation. Geometry can be a portal to imprisonment. And it's up to you. And I get it. It's not easy. It's scary. But there's more of us than there are of them. And so if we all gathered around and said, you know what? There's how many millions of people in this country alone? 20 something million. There's almost 8 billion people on the planet. If even half of those people said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that anymore. No, actually, that's not how it's going to happen. They would have no choice. They would have no choice. So here's what I would do. I would start doing my own research. I would start digging in. I would start looking at the very things that you reject that you say, oh, that's stupid. Oh, that's foolish. Oh, those people are crazy. Start paying attention to those people. Start paying attention to those sources of information. Use your own discernment. Let your body tell you if it's something that's true or not. Always pay attention to what your gut says. Trust your gut above all else. But don't continue to just brush aside that any, anything that feels inconvenient. Here's another thing, baby. Just because someone says something that triggers you or that makes you uncomfortable or that you don't understand or you don't like doesn't mean you're being gaslit. Gaslighting specifically means it is an intention to control someone through psychological means and the degradation of their own knowing. If that doesn't sound like the fucking matrix, I do not know what is. I know in my heart that when you hear bullshit or read bullshit, you feel something within you that goes, is that true? But we have been trained to say, oh no, suppress that. Suppress that. Take a pill. No, oh, no, 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 no. Be afraid of your feelings. Be afraid of your emotions. Take a pill. Pop a distraction. Ask Alexa for something, right? 
we all have these like little digital tits that we're sucking at and all we need is a little hit of serotonin. Okay. Hashtag world peace. Oh, look at me. I moved the mark on social justice today because I put a hashtag and 20 people liked it and three people shared it. Girl, please. Please. Go do something real. Fuck your hashtag. Fuck your hashtag spirituality. Fuck your hashtag activism. Fuck your hashtag political justice. Go out there and create the life you want. Quit screaming at the television and blaming it for all of your problems. It's not the conservatives' fault. It's not the the, uh, Democrats' fault or the liberals' fault. You are the creator of everything you experience. And within your hands, within your body, are the gifts and the means and the tools to recreate and uncreate. I am living proof. My life used to be nothing but anxiety and terror. 99% of the time, I was on alert for all of those phantom people who were just waiting to come for me. And every once in a while, I would get my head out of my ass long enough to go, oh, whew, this is a good day. This is a good moment. Now that has flipped. 99.9% of the time, girl, life is nothing but bliss and joy. And every once in a while, I have a hiccup. Every once in a while, I trip on something and go, oh, wait, that was my shit. So I am living proof. Yes, Ilkner, this will be back on my, um, this will be on my YouTube. I'm also going to post this on, or I'm, this will be on my Instagram for 24 hours. I'm also going to post this on my YouTube, Amar Energy, so you can find it there as well. So I am living proof that you can release, you can heal, process, and release your trauma. I am living proof that you can move beyond not only the history of pain and wounding, but the history of surviving. That's the other thing we've been sold, my friends. Even the survivor, even the identity of the survivor is rooted in the trauma. So the survivor role is just another limited option that the matrix gives you transformation moves beyond that and says, yeah, that happened to me. Yeah, that was a chapter, but that's not me now. And I am so far away from that. It's not even something that I think about, right? What do you put on your name tag? Here's another way to think about it. Whatever you put on your name tag, hello, my name is, hello, I am. I am what? I'm a trauma survivor. I'm an illness survivor. I'm an abuse survivor. Is that how you want to continue to introduce yourself? My mother's name is Nancy. I don't introduce myself as the son of Nancy. At some point, you have to decide that the identity you have is the one that you chose. And if you don't like the identity or what it's comprised of, become really, really curious about another way to live. And there are examples all over the place. I am one of them. Live the clarity of your example. When you see people going, my God, The whole world has been on fire for the past three years, but your life just keeps getting better and better. Yeah, because I insist on it. Because I refuse to accept anything less than that. Because I'm not sitting fucking waiting around for the matrix to give me permission to break the matrix. Right? It's like the idea of protesting. And I will never say that protesting is a bad idea. Protesting in action Protesting that people are actually investing themselves and involving themselves in is a really, really good thing. But if it begins and ends with the protest, it's useless. We're basically walking up to the jailers and saying, will you please free us? Will you please give us back what you took? Girl, the matrix is never going to give you permission to unplug because the matrix needs your investment and your belief in it in order to sustain. Do the math. It's really, really not that hard to figure out. If more control and more limitation was the answer, we wouldn't be where we are. So, what are you willing to claim? And what are you willing to put your full self behind and into? What are you willing to say, I don't care? I'm going to do everything I can to make this a reality. If I could show you the transformation that I have created back here in just three years, it would blow your mind. Three years ago when I got here, this was a fucking dead lot of acidic sand and weeds. That was it. There were no flowers that weren't, you know, I mean, there's some native flowers out there. That's not true. There's some native wild sunflowers and a couple of other pretty flowers. But for the most part, it's just weeds and sand. 
and nothing could grow in there. My God, the first year that I tried to grow wildflowers, I think the biggest one was like this tall because it was so starving for nutrients. Back here, now, girl, this is fucking paradise. If you could see what I have done back here in just three years, and I refused to stop. I refuse to give up on my vision because I knew my goal is to reconnect with the planet and the earth and the nature kingdoms to give as much as I can because I know if I give 1% to the planet, she gives me a 1,000% in return and it is fucking paradise back here. There are butterflies, there are bees, there are hummingbirds, there are birds everywhere, there are flowers and trees and produce and plants and it is unreal. What I have managed to do by myself in three years. So if you don't think it's possible, you are so dead wrong. You are so, so dead wrong. So smallness is not safety. And anybody that tells you that it is has something to gain by you holding yourself back. So push back. <laughs> I might, Rebecca, I might. Maybe someday I'll do a little tour back here so you guys can see what I've created. But this is the tea, y'all. This is where we are. So all you have to do, and if you're sitting there going, oh my God, Amar, well, what do I do? How do I do this? This sounds so daunting. This sounds so, like so much. It's so overwhelming. All you have to do is put your hand on your heart and say, Spirit, please remind me of what I came here to do. Please remind me of who I really am. Show me another way. Show me the path towards freedom. Show me the path towards liberation. Remind me of what my truth feels like and she will. And then your job is to follow the breadcrumbs. Your job is to follow the prompts. And do not tell me, oh, but I don't have a sign. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You always have a sign. And 99.9% .9 of the time when people say, oh, I don't have a sign. Yeah, you do, girl. You just don't want it to be that sign. You're just afraid of what that sign means. You just don't think you can do it. You just don't think you can have it. You just don't think it's possible or that you're capable. And I'm here to tell you, spirit is never going to give you a vision that is impossible. So if you're sitting there going, well, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't have a sign. Bullshit. I guarantee you, you know what it is. I guarantee you, you have at least an idea. And even if it's only, I just want to feel something else. I just want to feel something different. That's enough. Because it always starts with a feeling first. It's always feminine first. So tune into your emotional center. Tune into your feeling center. And that lives in here. It is not up here. This is not the place to go for that. This is where you go. You feel into it. You feel into it. A great journaling exercise is to get a pen and paper and start to write. If I had no restrictions, I would, and then just write. Just write. Just do a free writing exercise. Set a timer on your... Oh, I can't pick up my phone because I'm recording on it right now. Set a timer on your phone for 15 minutes and just sit down and use that prompt. If I could do anything, if there were no limitations, if there were no hurdles or hindrances in my way, what would I do? This is what... And just write. Just write, 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 write. Let it pour out of you. Let it erupt. Let it come onto the page. And then pay attention. Start being curious about another way to live. Humans did not come here just to be born into a livestock pen that is slowly but surely ushering them to their slaughter. We didn't come here just to slog through and suffer and die. And when I hear someone say that suffering is a necessary part of the human experience, all I hear is someone who doesn't know who they are. Because suffering helps in the experience. Suffering is a great motivator and a great inspirer in our experience. Suffering is a beautiful language that our self is using to tell us the direction that we're moving is maybe not the best direction, but it is not necessary. It is not a requirement and if it is, please show me the, doc the document where it is enshrined that I must suffer. Because I haven't seen it. So someone telling you something that you don't want to hear is not them gaslighting you. I'm not gaslighting you, girl. I don't want to control you. I have enough going on. I really have no fucking desire at all to control you. 
So I'm not gaslighting you. I'm just offering an alternative perspective and asking some tough questions that might be triggering you. And if you're triggered, good. Be curious about why. And if you're deciding that you're offended because being offended is a choice, then be curious about why. What is it that I'm saying that feels so dangerous to you? Because to the imprisoned animal, freedom feels like danger. If you're used to sleeping in a cage, a night under the stars might be terrifying. But it doesn't mean it's dangerous. That's what they want you to think. They want you to think that there's someone hiding around every corner to offend you. Or a microaggression against you. Or to get you. Girl, please, that is so tired. Aren't you exhausted of living in fear all the time? That is such a depleting state. Why do you think so many people are having chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue? Because they're in a constant state of chemical activation. Their adrenaline glands are going like gangbusters. So be really, really curious about anybody that wants you to stay small. Be really, really curious about promises that you have no had in hand in, in making. Because here's the other thing. All those pretty, pretty promises, just do this. Give me a little bit more of your power. Give me a little bit more of your money. Give me a little bit more of your attention. Oh no, just stay. Now wear five coverings on your face. Now get 12 jabs in your body. Now stay inside for 16 more months. Those are all lies. Those are all lies. Because you didn't have a hand in making those deals. So whatever deal or promise they're making you, Bitch, you weren't sitting at that table. You have no idea what they're not saying. You have no idea what they have edited out of their presentation. You have no idea what their actual agenda, agenda or intentions were because you weren't sitting at that table. So if someone is saying, trust me, take my deal. Only if you're going to show me the full notes of that conversation, unredacted and unedited. Otherwise, I have no interest in signing a deal that I had no hand in making. I have one authority in my life and it's spirit. Everybody else is just an avatar for my own sovereignty. And until such time as I raise up and go, wait a minute, no, 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 dear. That's not what I came here to do. That's not how I came here to live. And I am not judging whatever choices you have made over the past three years were your choices and good on you for making them. But you are the one who said yes or no. You are the one who decided to stay or to go. So all of those choices you had a hand in. And if you don't believe me, bookmark this, download it, and talk to me again in a couple months. Because the choices we are making now are erecting the geometry of our new phase of reality. So if the geometry that you are erecting is corrupt and broken and requires an outside source to keep it stable, i.e. the matrix, I'd be really, really reluctant to invest myself in that. But if the geometry is based on freedom and the unknown and moving beyond and transforming and rising up and reclaiming, fuck yes, sign me up. I don't have all the answers. I don't know what's around the corner, but I know it's a whole lot better than what I just moved through. Because this is not a regressive relationship. This is not a, a degenerative universe. We live in a creative, coherent reality. You are sticky to the frequency that you emit. And if the frequency that you emit is one of liberation and freedom and unity and collaboration and interdependency and co-creativity, then that's what you will attract. If you are sticky and coherent to victimhood, to limitation, to control, to indoctrination, to domestication, to colonialization, then that is what you will attract. Yes, it is, Rebecca. It is sometimes so hard to get past the fear of the unknown. But what I know without a doubt, this thing is always a liar. Always without question, 100%. And fear can only be present outside of the current moment. When I am in fear, it's because I'm not here. 
When I'm in fear, then I'm worrying about next week, or I'm worrying about next year, or I'm worrying about last week, or I'm worrying about last year. So fear never exists now. And fear is only a language. Fear is just a part of you saying, okay, I see you're about ready to jump off the cliff, but I don't know how to do that. And you put your arm around that part and you say, it's okay, baby. You don't have to know. I know. So watch me and I'll show you. So we've got to allow, yes, Gil, rewilding. Rewild it. Let it run free. Let it rip. Because the matrix is not going to hand you the key to the door to get out. It can't. That's not what the matrix was built for. It's a measure of control. That's all it can do is control. It is not meant to elevate or liberate or exalt. It is meant to separate and deny and destroy. So, on this full moon, let it go. If spirit wants to take it from you, let her. Because the only things that will ever be taken from us are the things that never belong to us in the first place. The only things that ever go are the things that no longer serve and support. The agenda for nature, for spirit, is for you to be a fully formed, highly functioning, self-sufficient organism. That's all she ever wants for any of it. And when you let these natural rhythms and cycles carry you and guide you and support you, they not only bring you to the place that is perfect for you, they remind you of who you are and who you have always been. The silence has always existed. You just have to turn off the radio long enough to allow it to return. So the future is not somewhere out there. The vision is not obscured by anything other than your refusal to look into here. So this is it, my friends. This full moon is an opportunity to let that slingshot pull you back and shoot you off into this new beautiful direction. But you have to say yes to it. You have to allow it and you have to be willing to do the work necessary to allow those claims to come into form. The claims that I have made this year are massive. They are huge. They are unprecedented in my life. And so the amount of fear that has been rising in response to those claims is showing me what still within me stands in the way. So I do not see fear as a reason not to do it. I see fear as something that's saying, I don't know how to do this. So you either need to let me go and release me or you need to allow me to be integrated like a wave returning to the ocean so that you can now get on with it. Needless to say, whatever claims you make are yours. But it's not Amazon.com, bitch. It doesn't just come to the front door. You got to do a little bit of work to make room for it. Because you can't be in victimhood and in liberation at the same time. So if liberation is what you want and there's victimhood programs standing in the way, the liberation energy will come in and it will lift those victimhood programs up to the surface so that you can finally see them, acknowledge them, feel them, and release them. I'm going to give you, yes, Mike, I mean fearless. Hello, I have it tattooed on my knuckles. I'm going to give you an exercise. And I love this exercise, and this is called fire writing. And this is a perfect time since we're in Leo season, even though it's an Aquarian moon. But we can also integrate the element of air. Fire writing. So sit down, get a pen and paper. This must be done analog. You have to do it with pen and paper. This doesn't work on a laptop or digital device unless you're going to burn your laptop at the end of the exercise, which I don't think you will. So get yourself pen and paper. Right? And you're going to start writing. You're going to write in first person. This is the exercise. You're going to write in first person. You're going to act. You're going to write as if these fears are real and they're active and they're true. And you're going to sit down and it's going to look something like this. I want to be free. I want to be abundant. I want to live in the forest and have a career above whatever it is you want. But I can't have it because. Or you could just make it simpler. I can't have what I want because. 
And then you will say, because I am traumatized, because I am ugly, because I'm overweight, because I'm old, because I'm poor, because I'm stupid, because I'm this, because I'm that, because I'm gay, because I'm black, because I'm female, because I'm non-binary, because I'm male, whatever. You're just going to write and write and write. Let the bile erupt. Let the venom and the poison and the toxic juice come out of you. And what happens when you're doing this is the thoughts and the beliefs and the programs that swirl around in here and keep you in that state of confusion will move down the arm energetically. Energetically, they will be transmuted in, they will be transferred into the pen, into the ink, and then they will become a word on the page. And your unconscious, subconscious self is watching you write onto the page as all of that venom turns into a word, a printed or written word. And you're gonna write until you feel depleted, until you feel drained, until it feels done. Then you're going to pull those pages out of the notebook and you're gonna go burn them. Now, obviously you're gonna do this safely, like in a fireproof container. I will usually do it in the sink, in the kitchen sink, because it's a stainless steel sink and I can burn in there. You could do it in a burn barrel outside or the fireplace or the fire pit, anywhere where you can burn safely and you're going to watch as those beliefs go up in flames and you will know and affirm through your intention that this fire writing has just transformed and transmutated a layer of your limitation, a layer of your indoctrination, your colonization, and your domestication. And you do that as many times as it takes. Sometimes you're going to do it two, three times a day. And then you'll only do it once a day. And then you'll do it a couple of times a week. And then before you know it, it's once a week. And then before you know it, you haven't done it in forever because that program is gone. This works. This is actual. And this is effective. I speak from experience. Fire writing is the tea, y'all, especially to get through this stuff. And you may also concurrently have an emotional response. You may find yourself, as I often do when I'm doing fire writing, that tears are just streaming down my face or rage is boiling in me while I'm writing. And I invite it. I say, yes, bring the sadness, bring the trauma, bring the fear, bring the anger, bring the brokenness and pour it onto the fucking page and then burn it. Burn it. Liberate thyself. Healer, heal thyself. You want to heal the world, heal yourself, and then live as the example of what it looks like to be healed. And I promise you, people will be rubbernecking to find out what the hell is she doing? What the fuck is going on with him, man? Because my life sucks and has only continued to get harder and he is flying high and free. That's it. This full moon is an opportunity. This grand cross and these squares and these tense, tense alignments are an opportunity. The intensity of these energy waves that have been streaming in since the Galactic New Year on July 26 are an opportunity. They are an offering. They are a gift. They are a portal, a doorway, but you have to be the one to walk through. This ain't the God of Abraham telling you that if you don't do it, you're going to die. This ain't the government telling you that if you don't put this in your body, you're going to die. This ain't the politician telling them if you don't give me your money and your, you know, your attention and your blah, 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 you're not going to be safe. No, that's the hogwash. That's the bullshit. You want to know what real danger is? Letting someone else's agenda become your truth. That's what's dangerous. Because if it was your truth, you'd already be on that path. And your path doesn't have to make sense to anybody else because it's not their path. It's yours. So at the end of the day, the only person that has to feel good about your choices is you. And I get it. You've got kids. You've got a family. You've got people who rely on you. And that's also important to say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. But ultimately, the choice is squarely in your hands. This is a free will universe. It is not punitive. It is coherent. It is creative. And it is reflective. It will always show you exactly what you believe by your external experience. Woo! Needed to let that out. <laughs> so I'm going to post this over on my YouTube. And I'll pin it here um, on my Instagram. It should be here for the next 24 hours or so. I'm also going to post it on my YouTube channel, YouTube Amar Energy. If you're looking for a community of people and like-minded individuals who are open-hearted and curious and doing everything they can to recreate the world the way that they want it to be, that's what this community that I've started, The Temple, is all about. There's a link in my bio. Excuse me. 
And you can go to my website, amar.energy, and check it out. Oh, I have a brand new website if you haven't checked it out. There's more information there. But the temple is our online community. It's wonderful, amazing, beautiful people who are doing exactly this, sharing with each other, like, what are we doing? How are we going to do this? This is how I did it. How are you doing it? So there are people out there on the other side of the bridge. There are people out there on the other side of the matrix who are doing what we came here to do and are happy to have more people showing up. So babe, you will not be alone on the other side of that journey. There's a lot of us out here, but you can't have it both ways. You can't live in the cage and call yourself free. At least not from my perspective. Love you. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. Happy full moon. I think I'm going to go play some video games and go back to sleep. <laughs> it is like one of those ones where I have not felt this physically affected by the energies in a dog's age. I am white. Like, I have about two hours a day these days where I can be fully functional and present and focused. And I just gave you an hour of it. So that's it for me, y'all. <laughs> I love you, love you, love you so, so much. If this has struck a chord with you, please share it with your people. Point them in my direction. Not because I need the likes and followers. I could give two shits about that. I love that you're here, but I don't do this for the likes. I'm not doing it for the cookies. I'm doing it because it's what I came here to do. But if this has struck something within you, if this has opened up something within you, then share it. And be curious about if anything within you is like, oh God, no, he's crazy. I can't do that. Be curious about that voice because I bet it's not your voice. I bet, it's the I bet it's the voice of your imprisoner. That's who it is. All right, y'all. Enjoy. Mwah. Love you.